Hi, I'm Marquis Latney, and I'm one of the designers here at Cybercal Studios. In our video about how I got into the game industry, if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. I go over the steps that I took that got me hired at Treyarch Activision and working on Black Ops. And I talk about the importance of having a portfolio and that I go into a little bit more depth about how to set one up. And now here's that video. As you probably know, a portfolio is a proof of works that show off your skill in a given field. It's the number one thing interviews are going to look for outside of your resume. If your resume and cover letter open the door, then your portfolio is what gets you inside the building and considered. First things first, you need to get together any projects that you've worked on. Now this could be projects you've worked on commercially or personally. A lot of people end up wondering if you needed to have launched a game or completed one in order to be able to put it into your portfolio. And the answer is absolutely not. If you've worked on a game and you've had a non-disclosure agreement and that game never came out, you can't disclose what you worked on. <laughs> well, you can't do anything there. That sucks pretty hard. Then you're gonna need a place to actually host your visual portfolio. You can do this in many different ways. You can create your own website, which is mad professional. Even have a sick domain name like marquise.com. But that only works if you know web programming or use a website builder, which brings me to my next point. You can use a website builder and hosting service. You've definitely heard of Squarespace, and I almost feel like we should be sponsored by Squarespace for just mentioning this, but we're not yet, but Squarespace helps create really nice looking, professional and dynamic web pages to do whatever you want with. You can sell things on them and use them like any other website, but they also have a bunch of templates that you can use that help you organize your pages pretty nicely. It hosts the page as well, so as long as Squarespace is alive and as long as you're paying them, your website's alive. Which is how they're able to give you as much control as they are under their domain umbrella. This one was for free, please sponsor us. But to make it even, other websites like Squarespace include Portfolio Box, Xyro, and Wix. Um, now all of these cost money and if you're a student or broke like I was, then this will be a bit of a problem for you long term. But you could use free sites instead like WordPress or Dribbble and the one I've used in the past, Behance. I like Behance because it's free. It really easily displays all your projects without you having to build any custom anything. Um, and it gives you enough control over text, media attachments, and ordering your files to give you enough control to show off your project exactly how you'd like to. It's like each tile is its own Tumblr page, which we'll get to in a bit. Now that you've chosen your host, you'll want to have your project in pieces in nicely curated sections that interviewers can look through with ease, just like a resume. And really, just like anything else, because we need to keep our audience in mind, right? So if you notice my portfolio, it's not great, but you can scroll through and see each project. And if an interviewer was looking over my portfolio, they don't have to sort for anything. If they're interested in a project, they can click and go deeper if they choose to. Now here's where the Tumblr portion kicks in. So I got this advice from a representative at Blizzard. I went to an animation expo with my college for my storyboarding class. We went so students could get their portfolios broken down by professionals in the industry and give them feedback um, on how they could improve. So I walked around a small convention for hours looking for anybody who might be able to help me with game design. Design. I saw no technical booths at all, and I just kind of got desperate and started asking anyone and everyone questions about my portfolio. Most, almost all, actually couldn't really help me, except for this one person from Blizzard who was over the hiring of the art interns. They said, I can't help you much with the technical side of things because I'm not sure what they're looking for, but at least for us, speaking about like the art side, you're gonna want your best and most recent work first. You'll want it in a way that I can look through it easily. I don't need to see everything, but if I'm interested in a project, I would like the option to go deeper into it. That way I can actually follow your process if I find something interesting or if I want to get an idea of how you operate. But that information should only be accessible if they choose to go looking for it. You don't want to bombard them with information. And most importantly, you're not showcasing your work well. And that's exactly what you want to do. Showcase your best and most recent work. Definitely a loose rule here because everyone's different and everyone has their own story. You just wanna be able to show a solid idea of where your skill level currently is. So to sum that up, put your best foot forward, put your best projects first and your most recent next. If your best projects are really old, then put them down the list a bit. That's kind of how I think of it. If you actually look at my portfolio, which is a little janky and out of date, um, I'd actually have a website set up at this point, but seeing as how I'm not actually applying for a job, this is my internship portfolio with a few changes. And hopefully you can get a better idea of how to set yours up. So my games are in chronological order. Smaller, newer games at the top, and I have some older, bigger games that are right below them. So I saw this ad here, try Adobe Photo uh, for free. So trying it now, it completely imported my current portfolio into a better portfolio. Um, so yeah, use this instead. To be honest, you might not even need a website with this. Yeah, it's a lot easier to scroll through things than it would be um, on Behance. 
So that's pretty cool. So yeah, you can use Portfolio with Adobe. It's free. Yeah, it seems like they have a lot of themes and support for this that you can get from stuff like Squarespace, uh, Wix and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, a lot, just free, free. Um, anyways, random. Also, if you've written any code, you'll need a code repository. Git works great as version control, and you'll be able to show off the more technical side of your projects on GitHub. GitHub is a public repository for your code. Bracky's did a great video on getting your Unity project on GitHub, and you can check the link in the description. So those are my tips on how to set up a game design portfolio. Hopefully that helped you guys. You know, if it did or didn't, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what else you'd like to see from us. Um, we have more videos coming out um, on different things, hacking versus spaghetti code, um, different stuff like that. So please stay tuned. Also to join our Discord if you haven't and support us on Patreon if you love what we're doing out here and want to see more from us. Um, but thank you. This is Marquise signing out. Uh... Okay, that, that works. <laughs>